Well, I think we all think of plastic bags and the banning of plastic bags as being an environmentally sound decision. They've been banned in uh, 30 cities. We're talking about banning them in more. But what if they're not as bad as we think they are? Is it possible that we could be overreacting? Are plastic bags really that bad? I don't know, guys. Joining me to hash this out in my Google Hangout are Adam Schlachter in Somerville, New Jersey, Stephen Joseph in San Francisco, Dr. Ori Zick in Cambridge. Cam Cambridge, really, Janet? How long have you lived in the United States? Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Jay Beaver in Los Angeles. Guys, thank you so much for, for joining me from as far away as Cambridge. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't be more excited <laughs> to have said that. Uh, Let's get right into it. Uh, we got to talk about this. I I want to start with you, Stephen, um, because you are uh, you're you're a real key player in this. You're leader of Save the Plastic Bag Coalition. Uh, you've been called the patron saint of plastic bags by Time Magazine. Let's uh, let's talk about it because I think one of the things that I you know when I first heard that I did make uh, the assumption that I think a lot of people make, which is okay, this guy must be uh, not concerned with the environment. What's going on? Uh, but then I looked into your background and I was uh, I was interested in in sort of what your causes have been leading up to this point and how you got involved uh, with the coalition. So why don't you uh, tell us a little about it? Well, I started out as the guy who got trans fat banned. I sued Kraft to ban Oreos and sued McDonald's and got uh, trans fat banned in New York and uh, California. And uh, I was approached by some plastic bag companies in 2007 who said, would you help us prevent plastic bag bans? And I said, no, uh, uh, but I will help you uh, recycle plastic bags. We can boost recycling uh, very radically and uh, came up with a program called stripes to stripesorg um, the website's still up, and um, we tried to promote curbside recycling of plastic bags. We got massive support from the industry. A lot of people applauded the effort, but it was blocked by environmentalists. I mean, I was astonished, and the environmental community said to me, we don't want to save plastic bags, we want to ban them. And I said, well, do you want to ban them because they're not being recycled? And they said, yes. Well, I said, well, then support recycling. And they said, no, we want to ban them. It was Catch-22. Um, and then later on, I found out that many of the things that were being said about plastic bags were absolutely false. They were talking about a Great Pacific garbage patch, twice the size of Texas, full of plastic bags and plastic bottles. I checked Google. I couldn't find any images of it. I couldn't find any photographs of it anywhere. And then the more I looked, the more I realized it was either a hoax or just a giant um, misinformation campaign. Um, I heard that 100,000 sea mammals and a million seabirds were being killed by plastic bags. Uh, I believe that originally, and that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to defend plastic bags. And then in 2008, the London Times did an expose um, with the support of Greenpeace, incidentally, and said this was not true. Uh, the Australian government and the US government said it was not true, that these, ba that these uh, birds and mammals were being killed by fishing nets and fishing hooks and fishing lines and the environmental community comes back and said well they're made of plastic aren't they lines and hooks and, and right. nets right. therefore we should ban bags well i thought that was illogical and the more i dug into this the more i realized this was a campaign based upon misinformation anything the environmentalist said the left wing believed i'm a democrat i'm a lefty right. but i would not believe the lies i well, don't care you know, well, whether they're coming from my own people or someone else well let's talk adam i want to bring you into this uh how much sure. of of uh of what stephen's saying i mean how, how much of this are you in agreement with uh are these facts that are impossible to argue with talk to us you know i i have a, had a lot of experience in the litter side i've worked on a landfill and i'm not going to lie to you plastic bags fly around all the time but the reality is, is it's packaging and it, it's not limited specifically to plastic bags, um, but they are definitely more of a problem than I think is being portrayed. But at the same time, I think the solution is if we don't make it, then we don't have to deal with it. So it, it's better to focus on highest and best use of the, of, of the item. So putting, eliminating bags, is, is a good thing to do because then we don't have to worry about whether or not it's plastic going into the ocean, causing a guy or seabirds, you know, eating them, or if it's paper bags decomposing in the landfill, causing greenhouse gases. If we don't have either one, then we don't have a problem. And 
from a management of waste standpoint, that's a much better approach than, you know, which is better? What, what do we what, what do we have to get rid of? Right, right. Well, Ori, uh, you're founder and CEO of, of Energy Points. What Talk to us about reusable bags. I mean, that's something that obviously uh, I've been, I guess, conditioned to think so, is better than either. Yeah, so uh, if we... Yes, exactly. So it's this tends to be a local problem. If we do the numbers, it turns out that indeed plastic is a not uh, is a little bit better than paper bags in most locations in the U.S. Unless you are uh, in a location that um, I mean, it depends on how much water you have in the location. So an average U.S. family uses about the equivalent of two gallons of gasoline in their plastic bags, and the equivalent of about five if they shop only with paper bags. But if we go to canvas bags, then it, it's almost, it's less than a percent. Namely, if we use a canvas bag only 40 times, it's less energy intensive and less damage to the environment than both alternatives. So if we do the calculation, it turns out that the best alternative is a reusable uh, bag like canvas. And then it's true that in most locations, paper is slightly better than plastic. And I totally agree that if we look on the impact on the environment of all plastics, it's pretty negative. Jay, you're making a sound. I can only <laughs> assume it means you would like to respond. So hello well, uh, and welcome. Hi, how are you? Um, well, you know, I, I've done a lot of research on this, and, and I think that um, th there may be some other people that can speak to the, exp the specific numbers. But, but in terms of our research, um, canvas bags are highly intensive in terms of the environment. You have to grow the cotton, you have to manufacture it, you have to turn it into the into the canvas bags. That I don't know if he's if he's using all of that whole like you know from the beginning yeah. to the end of the life cycle. But um, yes. I think Stephen can speak to this much much more accurately than I can. But I just happen to know that in terms of of the studies that have been done, what he's saying is just it's just not accurate. Ori, I'm going to let you respond to that right, because so, I know uh, the question so, was, uh, what you know, yeah. the lifespan that, that Jay brought up. So, yeah, so the embodied, so the embodied, yeah, so of course the embodied energy in a canvas bag is much higher than in a plastic bag, but then you use it many more times. So if you use a, a canvas bag, let's say 40 times, it's about break even. And well, can, I, can, I, can I ask you a question then? Then? Many more times. And actually the life cycle... Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I want to ask, are you are you calculating into the fact that that plastic bag may get reused a number of times and then used, at, let's say, for garbage, and then instead of another plastic bag that would otherwise be used in terms of garbage? Are you calculating all those so, sorts so of things, or are you just assuming the plastic bag is being thrown away? Yeah, so I assume uh, thrown away. So one time, if you assume re re reusing the plastic bag, then the break-even is, let's say, about 80. Well, but again, that it, when you say you reuse, but the thing is, if you reuse it, but then instead you would use a different plastic bag that might be, say, a heavier thickness or whatever, you have a larger um, effect on the environment. So again, you have to take yeah. everything so, into yeah, account. Yeah, exactly. So well, the kind of things that we do, we ask how much energy you need to uh, invest in order to manufacture the material and, then, and in its entire cradle-to-grave uh, assessment, but we do it in simple numbers that... Uh, uh, people can grasp and understand, and we include water use, material use, energy, and so on. Well, I'd like to hear Stephen yeah, on this. Stephen, yeah, I actually do. Yeah, I do want to come over to you, Stephen, and I also wanted to ask. Um, well, actually, please respond. Please respond. You know, uh, every Ori assumes correctly that you have to use a reusable bag many, 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 many times to offset the greater environmental impacts of making that bag and disposing of that bag compared to a plastic bag. The British government did a study, that's an independent study by the British government, and they said a cotton bag has to be used 173 times to offset the a greater environmental impacts compared to a plastic bag. Well, people aren't going to use every single bag that many times or that many times on average. But let me say this, Ori, it's very important that you understand this point, because I think this is not well understood. If you do use the bag many times, that many times, and you don't wash it, then you end up with a highly contaminated bag. There was a serious case of the norovirus being spread in Oregon. Oregon public health officials released a public health report in April of this year in which nine teenage girls caught the norovirus from a reusable bag that had not been washed 
okay? And their family members became extremely sick. They were vomiting and had diarrhea for a full week. That is available if you want to contact me. I can send you the public health report. And the Oregon public health officials said this, is a, this was previously a misunderstood issue to do with reusable bags. And there are many, many studies now. In fact, one TV station recently took reusable bags from customers in the store. They all said they hadn't washed the bags. They sprayed some kind of glowing um, gel inside the bag to show where the bacteria were. And it was spreading from the items in the bag to other items in refrigerators. These bacteria, including E. coli and salmonella, build up inside reusable bags and they can be transmitted by baggers who put their hands into reusable bags at the checkouts. Now, that's one of the reasons why in Europe you don't have baggers. In this country, we have baggers. And when they put their hands in from bag to bag, and this isn't funny, this is serious. They put their hands in from bag to bag in these filthy, dirty, reusable bags. Maybe 500 in a day, they can spread all kinds of problems. Adam, uh, Adam, Adam. I, I, yeah, Ori, I want to come to you, but Adam, I, I did see you smiling uh, several times. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm unable to resist uh, when a gentleman is grinning while someone else is talking. I do need to ask you uh, what you were reacting to. Two points. One, I'm... I, you know, if, if you have a cotton bag that you've taken to the store and put something in and it's been wet, it's been, you know, rained upon, logic dictates you should clean that bag. Same with a plastic bag. Yes. Something spills in it, you should wash it out. I mean, the fact is that if you use a bag multiple times and it gets dirty, it's like a piece of clothing. You throw it in with your shirts and your the rest of your laundry and it comes out clean and is no longer in potential, you know, or has as little of a vector of potential for disease as any other piece of clothing that went through the wash dry cycle that we all do every day. And and secondly, you know, Stephen, let's be realistic. Have has the plastic bag industry done a study of how many times you can actually reuse the plastic bags being manufactured today? I mean, personally, I've used plastic bags two or three times and they've broken, so I've had to throw them away. I can honestly say I have cloth bags from 12 and 15 years ago when I started in the recycling business. They're, you know, faded, but they still work. There's no rips. The integrity is there. So, Adam, Adam, you yeah. know, one of the problems is that people don't know that they have to clean reusable bags. Have you ever seen a big printed notice on a reusable bag saying that if you don't clean this bag, bacteria, including E. coli and salmonella, can build up? People don't know that. Right, unless but your you manufacturers on, still have to put you it. Print that on the bag and tell people why okay. they have to wash the bag, they won't do it and they don't do it. And well, what's happening is these bags, are, there's all kinds of meat juices and other things being put in the bags. And not only that, people use these bags to carry their uh, clothing when they go to the gym. There's all kinds of problems. You know, the bag in Oregon had been in a bathroom and all of the stuff from the bathroom had become had infected the bag. Two weeks later, that bag was still infected. Read the Oregon. This is an Oregon public health report. Well, it's not funny. Right. Yeah, well, guys, and, and while we're talking about location, while we're, we're being specific to Oregon, obviously that was something uh, specific to that area. But, Ori, I want to go back to you because I think um, I was a little, I'm, I'm a little confused by what you were speaking of when you talk about it, it, that location can determine what makes the most sense in terms of whether you are near water, uh, Etc. I'm a little unclear on that. Right. So yeah. So the benefits of plastics versus paper and and, and canvas and so on depends significantly in on issues like energy and water. For example, if you're on a water scarce place like uh, and drying and so on. Uh, I missed that last more, part. I missed that last part. More water intensive and consume more energy. So what I said is that if you're in a place which is water scarce, like let like, I don't, I, I, I keep missing the same part over and over again. Hold on, let, let's hold on to that and let's see if our, see if this, see if our quality improves uh, on our audio. I want to talk about, um, I've got this, the, the, this HuffPost San Francisco page pulled up, um, looking at the plastic ban, uh, plastic bag ban lawsuit filed against the city of San Francisco. Let's talk a little bit about the lawsuits because I know that, um, Stephen, depending on where the ban has happened and whether or not they've done a certain study, uh, the, you know, that the, the lawsuits are not um, something that you pursue under certain circumstances and they are under others. Can you speak to that for a second? 
Well, the purpose of the lawsuits is to get environmental impact reports done. The problem is that we have environmental organizations who are spreading misinformation to politicians and the public, and decisions are being made based upon myths. And so we believe that an environmental impact report will provide correct information for decision making. But cities and counties and environmentalists have been resisting that because they want these decisions to be based upon myths and symbolism. And so you have things like what um, I, th I guess it's Adam who said, well, we have all this litter. Look, Adam, I sued San Francisco over graffiti and formed a litter patrol in North Beach in San Francisco. I know what the litter stream is, and so does San Francisco. Less than 1% of litter is plastic bags, and you know that, and I know that. If you want to get rid of litter, and this would be an environmental impact report, if you want to get rid of litter, and you're going to try and ban your way to a litter-free society, well, you're going to have to ban everything. You're going to have to ban cigarettes and bottles and cans and newspapers and paper bags and plastic bags and everything else. It's a ridiculous way of trying to solve the litter problem. I clean litter myself in San Francisco. I clean my own street. I've always been responsible about that. But I'm not going to say to you that the solution to cleaning litter on my street is banning everything that I find on my street. The solution to litter is to pick it up. No, the solution to litter is to educate folks. As you as you clearly pointed out, cloth bags, reusable bags don't have something that says you should clean them. Yet every plastic bag has something that says you shouldn't put this bag over your head. So maybe that's what you should be looking at legislating is better communication and education, not the, the focus on producing something that is obviously a problem in in many places and doesn't actually need to be used. I mean, so let's ban everything we don't need, Adam. Let's ban Jay, everything Jay, we don't need. That's not what I'm Jay, saying. I'll let you respond. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I actually want to want to take a moment and step back from all of all of the. It's 80 bags. At times you have to use the bag, or you know, 180 times. Yet the, the the point that Stephen is trying to make and that I'm trying to make um, in this discussion is that plastic bags are not the scourge on the environment that we have been led to believe and. And I used to believe that plastic bags were a horrible thing, and I believed all these things until I started looking into it. And, you know, when you, you have to make decisions based on a, a rational decision and to take something that is that looks like it's a problem, but really isn't the big problem that's being made out to be and focusing on that. There's an opportunity cost in that. There's an opportunity cost in not using the plastic bag for a ver uh, for various reasons. And instead of actually focusing on things that would actually make our environment better, unfortunately, they're focusing on something that looks like it may be, or is, as Stephen says, is a symbol and is not actually going to improve things. And that's really, I think, what the what the issue is. You know, we can go back and forth about you know how many times you have to use a, a reusable bag in order to make it a little bit better than a plastic bag, but the fact of the matter is our society and our environment is not being destroyed by people taking their groceries home in a plastic bag. And I think that's the takeaway from this. So does, so so uh, so is it is the plastic bag just a very easy uh, day to day representation of plastic sort of with a capital P in terms of what's happening, uh, what whether it's recyclable, whether it's poisoning us, whether the sort of micro uh, plastic. And again, I've made it very clear. I'm not an expert I, every time I open my mouth. But uh, but but, you know, when, when you were speaking, Stephen, about the uh, the misunderstandings about what our oceans really look like and, and where the plastic actually is causing problems. And, you know, this idea, as you said, that uh, we blame plastic bags when really what it sounds to me from from just reading up for the segment, you know, is that it's it's plastic you can barely even see, but it's still a problem. Is that what this has become? Is is, is a plastic bag a, a day to day poster child for such a large problem that uh, that's why environmentalists are kind of clinging to the idea? Well, it's 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 strange. You talk about the ocean. Um, you know, somebody who we can talk to is uh, Miriam Goldstein at Scripps, and she has confirmed that the plastic that they find in the ocean when they go out there because they do find plastic particles is almost entirely hard plastic. Almost none of it is soft plastic. And they don't find any accumulations of plastic bags. And of course, when you're talking about hard plastic, you're not talking about plastic bags. Nevertheless, it's become a poster child. This whole idea of the plastic in the ocean has become a, a, a basis for banning plastic bags. But the problem in the ocean is not plastic bags. So, you know, it's it's symbolism gone gone 
gone crazy. It's 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 not symbolic of anything real. It's just a symbol. And it's and, and let me say something else. You know, I know this doesn't matter to Democrats and I'm a Democrat, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, there's, a, there's tens of thousands of people employed in the United States making these bags. And when Adam says, well, we should just ban the bags, you know, people's livelihoods depend on these bags. 72% of all plastic bags used in the U.S. are made in the U.S. And when you just say, well, we should ban bags because they're wasteful, all right, well, let's start banning everything that's wasteful and see how much of an economy we have left. I understand that. I think that's a whole other argument, and I, I, it's, it's a salient argument. point, but it's, well, it's, it, let me put it this way. We don't have time for it. Is that helpful? <laughs> uh, it's an argument we don't have time to get into in terms of uh, cutting jobs and, and, and employment, but obviously that's, that's something that uh, comes into uh, play every time we talk about, you know, closing any sort of facility or we talk about what's harmful to the environment, I, that does come into play. And it's, and it's, it's you know, it's a salient point. Um, because there have been uh, more smiles and chuckles than I expected in this conversation, I choose to end with uh, a playful comment from uh, Abraham Sapien who says, solution, bags made of pastrami. After a single use, you eat it, problem solved, addresses pollution and short-term <laughs> hunger. I await my Nobel Prize. I will make sure you guys get his contact information so that this conversation can continue, inevitably leading to said Nobel Prize. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, you've given me a lot to think about, and I learned a lot more than I, uh, than I anticipated about plastic bags. So I got, I'm in a quandary, guys. Uh, thanks again, and guys, thanks for participating. Thanks for weighing in with your comments. Uh, I gotta go make a paper bag, I mean a plastic bag sandwich, a pastrami sandwich.